Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this video, I want to show you how you can take boring or classic afternoon photo and make it into black and white fine art that's going to kill it. So one thing I love to do when I do black and white is to play with the tapered light, the natural dodge and burn from the leaf. So I'm going to try to take a photo this way and see what happens. One trick is when you want to do black and white uh, and you have a day like this where you have some like really nice blue and really nice clouds, it's very important to shoot the opposite of the sun. The sun is over there and I'm going to shoot this way because this way the, the blue from the sky is going to be really deep and it's going to become almost black in the, in the black and white and that's what makes the photo incredible, I find. I'm going to show you a photo which I think is going to work really well because the, the problem is if you're into like the Garden of Luxembourg, there's so much people that uh, it's hard to uh, get a nice foreground element. Look at this cloud, this is going to be amazing with the, the reflection in the water. Now the key trick is to go down. That's the framing I'm gonna go for. I'm gonna try different focal distance and see. So I'm gonna try to use these flowers as a foreground element. Do you see how the sky is completely burned this way? You're not gonna get nice dramatic clouds. So you really have to shoot the opposite, which is what we're gonna do. Look at this view. This is going to be good because we're gonna get some good details and I love the, you know, the, the flowers in the foreground. I mean, maybe this should stay in color and not black and white, we'll see, but I love having some flowers as a foreground element. So I moved a bit so I could be more in the center uh, and play with these flowers as a foreground element. I like the statue here on the left, the senate in the middle and the flowers on the right. I like some of the shots. Let's jump into Lightroom and see how it goes. So we are back from the Garden of Luxembourg. And the first thing that I do when I try to do a fine art photography is of course go through my different photos. And any photos that I think has a potential, I give it a one. By the way, I'm also giving you some of these raw files for you to check them out and so you can follow along. You can even publish them and uh, just post them on Instagram and credit me as at photo surge so I can see if you follow the instruction well and also, you know, just create as you want. This is the first shot that I got. I'm not sure I really like this one. Um, hmm. Maybe I'll give it a one. It has potential to me. It's just, mm, there's a lot of things going on. Uh, this is a shot I showed you where I was shooting toward the sun. You see how the sky is fully washed out, so I'm not even going to select it. This one is kind of cool, but, you know, I basically have different shots with the same view. So when I have that, what I do is I select all four shots and I press N on my keyboard and then I press Shift Tab and that's gonna put me into survey mode, N for survey mode. Don't ask me why. And then I can see, okay, I got four photos and I can see, okay, which one do I want? You see this one, the sun, for example, was away. This one, the sun was here. So I think I'm gonna select this one. I'm gonna give it a one and all the other ones I'm not. So I'm gonna press Shift Tab to go back to normal view. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here. You see, I, I let's take this four, press Shift Tab. So I'm still in survey mode. And which one am I gonna select? Because I've been shooting a lot of the same view. But you know, sometimes the sun is there, sometimes it's not. I think, uh, you know, sometimes I get a bit lower to the water. Like this is a bit bright to me. I think I'm a little wide anger. Yeah, if I had to pick one. So one thing you can do is if you're not sure, you can say, okay, this one is too bright to me, so I'm not gonna select it. Okay, so I'm gonna press X and it disappears. And then all three becomes bigger. And it's like Highlander, there can be only one. 
Okay, this one is still too bright to me, so I'm going to erase it. And now I got two left. So this one, I'm going to give it a one. And this one, I'm going to give it a one. Shift tab to go back. And uh, let's see here. Let's take the next four ones. I go four by four. Shift tab to go in full screen mode. And uh, well, they're very similar. This one is kind of original because it's got lots of, you know, a little bit of Senate here. That's the Senate in Paris and some clouds. So I'm going to give it a one. The other ones I'm re not really going to touch because, uh, yeah, maybe this one I give it a one. Just a potential one. All right. So, uh, yeah, I love that view. So as you can see, I took a lot. This one and this one. This one, I might give it a one. It's a lot of ones. One just means it has potential. Now we come to the flower shop where the, you know, the flower was as a foreground element. Um, I think, yeah, let's see. Let's use them in serving. So N for serving mode, shift tab to go full screen mode. And let's see here. Um, yeah, I think only this one, I'm going to give it a one. It's kind of underexposed, but I did it on purpose because I wanted to get all the blue from the, from the sky. And then I moved away, so let's see, is it three? And then we have this one, this one. Oh, I think this one is it. Yeah, this one is it. It's brighter. The sun was on the flower. The sun was away from the flower. This is kind of cool. This is like very Instagram, so I'm going to give it a one, two. Shift tab. Okay. And then this is, uh, yeah, no, it's too much stuff going on. Look, there's too many people, too many things going on. Same thing here. Not going to select this one. Yeah, I got much better than that. I don't like that. I don't like that. This one might be cool. I'm going to give it a one. Uh, the little, uh, yes, the little house. Okay, now we come to this sort of frame in the frame. And I think, yeah, this one was underexposed. Now on this one, just one little trick is the true good way to take that is to take two photos, one focusing on this and the one focusing on, let me go to the develop mode because you only see the omitted preview so but you see this one is kind of blurry and this is very sharp so i focus i use the spot focus to focus on that and um and i was at f22 on purpose so this is kind of blurry but it's going to be okay for what we're going to be doing so i'm going to give it a one star i think this one is kind of cool this one yeah has potential i give it a one star and then let's see here and then there's a whole bunch of other ones of framing a frame i love framing the frames and let's see which one would I pick. Uh, they're very, very similar. It's just like different, like more clouds, less clouds. I think, I think the one I like the most is probably, I don't know, probably the first one because it's it's dark here. Here it's bright. The eyes goes to the brightest part of the photo. So the fact that it's kind of a natural vignette, I think I'm going to pick up this one and none of the other ones. Okay, uh, a lot of good and a lot of bad photos. And this one, yeah, I took this one just because it was the Eiffel Tower. But there's too many things in the foreground. Okay, cool. So now uh, I'm going to select. Uh, you see, now we have 14 photos out of 41, which have potential. That doesn't mean that they're going to end up being it. They're just, they have potential. And um, so I'm going to start out with a bang with one of the photos that I like from this series. So I'm going to go Shift Tab again. Uh, N for survey mode. And then I'm, I'm going to pick one, which I think is the best one. And, um, you know, I think I'm going to go for this one. This one, I'm going to give it a two. And that's the one I'm going to work on. Be why? Because uh, it's a little more wide angle than the other ones. And uh, I like how it's underexposed. And now I'm going to show you, I'm going to turn this into like a dramatic, finite black and white. And this photo, I think I'm actually going to give it to my galleries for sale. So it's no joke. I'm actually really doing it for real here. So, okay. The first thing that I do when I go black and white, the first thing that I do is I click here to black and white. Now everything becomes kind of grayish. And um, there's a couple of things you can do. I want to get that sky to be a lot darker. So there's a couple of things you can do. The first thing you can do is play around with the white balance. See, if you go left or right, you see, if I go right, you see how the sky becomes brighter. And if I go left and I add blue, it becomes a little bit darker. But just be gentle. Just do it a little bit. Okay. The next thing you can do is you go here in the black and white mix, which is only valuable because I clicked on black and white. And on this one, basically the way it works is, well, let me go straight to the blues. But it takes anything that it finds in the photo, you see. And in this case, it's the blue. 
And if you go left, it makes that blue darker. So it becomes a darker gray or a brighter gray. Now I want a darker gray, so I'm just going to make this smaller. Now the trick is don't go over minus 30. If you go too much, like minus 57, you're going to get, and in this one, it's not so much visible, but on a big print, you might, yeah, you can see it kind of here. You're going to get what we call artifacts, where the pixel are just, it's just too much. You're going to get strong halo. So a good rule of thumb is not to go over 30. So 30 is kind of cool, but there's still a lot to be done to make this into a fine art, a lot. Uh, that's just a starting point. The next thing I, I want to do is I think I want to make the horizon straight. So one way you can do that is go to the transform section and click on auto and pray. Uh, sometimes that works well. It's just going to make it straight, which I think it did a pretty good job. And on this one, I want to make sure the Senate is very straight so I can go to vertical and make the Senate even more straight. And I think I want to rotate it to make it really more straight. So that's kind of cool. I like that. And uh, now I'm ready to go into local adjustment to really make it pop. So I'm going to take this gradient here. And I'm click and drag. I want to make that sky a lot darker. So I'm going to double click on effect and I'm going to add some darkness to it like this and actually a little more. And usually what I do is I do one first pass and then I go new again and I do a second pass for the very top of the photo like this, very, very top like this, just so that it closes the photo a little bit. And then I make a third one here at the bottom. So I want the people to look inside. And uh, well, the Senate is very bright, so they're definitely going to look inside. Okay, so that's kind of cool. That's the gradient. The next thing is the Senate somehow is too bright and just, you know, the eyes go to the brightest part of the photo. So yes, people are going to go to the Senate, but it's a little too much. So what I do is I take a little brush, I double click on effect. I make sure that auto mask is off and that the flow and density is around 80. And then I'm going to do some lower exposure and I'm just going to paint over the center just to bring, you know, so it doesn't burn the eye too much. So it's not too strong, maybe a little more. 0 0.45, 0 0.58, yeah, something like this. And usually what I do is, and that's the trick. Is so now the whole thing is a little bit darker, but now it's the same gray everywhere. So I want to break that pattern. So what I do is I hold on the option key, which is going to basically become an eraser of what I just did. And I'm going to erase just partially a little bit on some places what I did. So it's not uniformly grayish, uh, lower grayish. The next thing I want to do is I want to make my clouds wider. I mean, they were really white. So I'm going to take a new brush, double click on effect. And then this time I'm going to paint on the, on the, on, on the clouds here to make them brighter. I still want to get the dark sky, but I want to get the bright, you know, so I can, I can push my whites. I can maybe um, open the shadows a bit. Boost the exposure, yeah, boost the exposure. That's a good way to do it. And just make some of this, not everything, but some of these clouds really pop because they are kind of the stars. And you see, if you go on the trees, hold on, you can hold on the option key, make your, your brush smaller by using the middle mouse and then brush that off, kind of, yeah, brush that off. So it, it only goes on, on, on the clouds. So now it's starting to look like something that I really like. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cr create a new brush but this time for the water. So for the water, I'm just going to add a little bit of exposure here and here like this. So as to make it pop, voila, I kind of like that. And then I'm just going to open up a little bit the shadows, bring down a little bit the highlights on this one. And then I'm going to do my black point. So I'm going to hold on the option key and do the black point and then do the white point as like a final. Now, you can start by doing this or you can end by doing this. So, and it's just gonna add a lot of contrast. Look at this. This is kind of cool. Um, let's see, I think, I think the building is still a little bit too bright for me. So, I can go in here, zoom in a little bit, and just double click on effect, lower the exposure, take a brush, I just, I don't know, I wanna, make some part a little bit darker. And you can use a space bar to move around, something like that. Let's move back, and then this is minus 97. I usually don't go over 0 0.5, you know, plus 0 0.5 or minus 0 0.5. You don't want to go too much. 
okay? And you're better off doing layer by layer of brushes until you have exactly the lights uh, like you want them. So, but if you press the back, actually, you can see the before and the after, the before and the after, pretty cool. Now, I'm gonna show you another example, and uh, which is uh, this one. And this time, I'm going to do the reverse, meaning I'm gonna start by opening up the shadows, bring down the highlights, I'm gonna do my white point, hold on the option key, I want to make sure I don't have anything burned. So the way it works, if you hold on the option key and you move the whites, anything you see here, the yellow, the blue, all of that is basically uh, pure white. You, you know, it means like if you would print, it wouldn't put any ink. Okay, and then I'm going to bring down the blacks. You want about, yeah, what you see here in yellow and green, I'm holding on the option key, the alt key is pure blackness. Okay, now I'm going to convert to black and white and it's already looking kind of cool. Now, uh, I want to really make a frame in the frame, so I'm going to work a lot with the brush. I mean, dodging and burning is really the art of black and white. So I'm going to use a brush, double-click on effect to make sure everything is at zero, bring down my exposure, and make sure my flow and density is in the 70s. And then, actually, in this case, I'm going to do more. I want to, I want to darken this whole section here so that uh, it's just like a sort of a shadow, uh, you know, especially here and you can do it with two pass off brush it usually works better than just doing one strong pass okay all right that's pretty cool i'm gonna take uh i, I want to make this instagram format so i'm gonna go here and then take the crop tool sorry crop tool go four by five four by five is the instagram standard format and maybe crop it here so that we are we see a little more what's going on and I love this, I love this. Maybe add a bit of texture and lower the clarity so that we don't have any hellos. And now I'm ready to take a little brush. Don't forget to like this video and leave me a comment. I make one to two videos per week and I love to hear what you like about my videos, what can be improved, what you want to learn. I'm, I read every single comment. So give some love and smash that like button and subscribe if you didn't get a chance to so you can get every week my um, tutorials. Okay, so. Um, on this one, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna add some exposure here. Yeah, I'm just want to make this a little bit brighter. This is really kind of cool, especially this. But um, no, that's too much. So remember, you can hold on the option key and you raise. So I'm only raising on the building. I like what I did on on the sky, and I can zoom in too. You know, this is like a 43 million pixel uh, shot. You see how sharp it is? It's crazy sharp. New, and then I want to make some of these uh, clouds a little bit brighter. So I'm going to add a bit of exposure on the clouds here and here and here. Yeah. And, you know, if I really wanted this to be perfect, I would have taken one photo for this and another one for that. And you'll focus uh, focal stacking. But I didn't have my tripod on me. And in the tripods are not allowed in the Garden of Luxembourg. So I had no choice to do it this way. But I still really enjoy what I did. And uh, voila, I think I want to fine tune and add a bit more white. Yes, 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 yes. And maybe, you know, just some more brush, some more brush. I think there's, I want people to look there. I think I'm going to make this whole section a bit darker. So, um, new brush, lower the exposure. Just make this a little tad bit darker. And again, go past, yeah, 0 0.5 max. You see here, 0 0.58, max, max, max. Not too much than, not more than that. Otherwise, it's going to look weird. Okay. And this is uh, another sort of fine art photo of the Garden of Luxembourg. Now, this is just part one. In part two, I'm going to show you some other retouching. And I'm going to show you how you can do this in a couple of clicks with amazing presets. Coming next Tuesday.